We will now hear from IADR President-elect Eric Reynolds with IADR 100 Years On, driving science, engagement, and globalization post-COVID-19. IADR President Pam Denbeston, AADR President Mark Hertzberg, CADR President Walter Secura, CEO Christopher Fox, distinguished guests, corporate partners, and members from around the world. I am profoundly honoured to be elected as the 98th President of this august association. I joined IADR in 1983. 1983 was a very significant year for me as it was the year I attended my first IADR general session and it was held in Sydney, Australia. It was in fact the first IADR general session to be held in Australia, where IADR members from around the world could experience close by the iconic structures of the Sydney Harbour Bridge and the Opera House, as well as wonder at the unique Australian species, the kangaroo, platypus and koala of the nearby zoo, and enjoy the amazing artwork of the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples. It was also the year Coralie and I were married, and we in fact both attended the IDR General Session, as we have for many of the General Sessions over the past 38 years. Coralie works with me at the Melbourne Dental School, so she's not only my wife, but also a valued colleague. And I would not be here today if it were not for her scientific contribution, her very loyal support and sage advice. We are still both passionate members of IADR. IADR has been instrumental in my career development right from my first general session in Sydney, where I met inspirational researchers from around the world. The people shown in the slide are just some of those who have shaped my career and inspired me into a career of dental research. I strongly recommend to our student members and other early career researchers that you reach out to senior members who work in your research area by email or through the online IADR community. And when we do finally return to face-to-face -face general sessions, that you find a way to attend and meet as many people as you can. You will find, as I did, these senior researchers are very generous with their advice and support, and they will inspire you. It is this networking opportunity that IADR offers that acts as a catalyst in the career development of all members, and it is highly valued. The IADR is very fortunate to have an outstanding Chief Executive Officer in Christopher Fox, who leads a talented team at Global Headquarters. The strategic governance of the IADR is provided by a diverse and enthusiastic board of directors. I've been fortunate to work with and learn from three presidents, Rena D'Souza, Paula Moynihan, and now Pam Dean who are passionate leaders. And on behalf of all members, I thank them for their excellent and ongoing contributions. I'm very ably supported by the new president-elect, Brian O'Connell, and the new vice president, Ophia Klein. I thank them also for their commitment to the IDR, and I look forward to working with them more closely over my term as president. The theme for my presidential term is IADR 100 Years On, driving science, engagement and globalisation post-COVID-19. Just over 100 years ago, IADR was founded by a Professor of Biological Chemistry at Columbia University, William J. Guise. He was involved in dental research, investigating the microbiology and biochemical processes of dental caries. He founded the IADR to unite a community of like-minded dental scientists to promote excellence in research related to what we now call dental, oral and craniofacial research. The original articles of agreements signed in December 1920 state that IADR was established to promote broadly the advancement of active research in all branches of dentistry so that dentistry may render cumulatively more perfect service to humanity. Our current mission statement may use slightly less eloquent words, but the message is much the same, to drive dental, oral and craniofacial research for health and well-being worldwide. The need to ensure the quality of our science and status as the premier research organisation globally in dental, oral and craniofacial research is still as strong today as it was 100 years ago, particularly with the IADR strategy of globalisation and membership growth. The IADR scientific groups and networks have a critical role in science quality control by reviewing general session abstracts, as does the annual session committee with its oversight of proposed symposia. 
It is vital that these reviewers in their assessment and aim to maintain quality offer constructive criticism of proposals to provide a learning and improvement process to keep members, particularly early career researchers, engaged. Similarly, it's important that all members are offered the opportunity to comment on the development of IADR science policy by the IADR Science Information Committee to allow input from all member key opinion leaders around the globe to achieve broad member ownership of the policies. IADR must engage effectively with all its stakeholders globally to maximise its convening power. This requires representation from all IADR regions on the different IADR committees. Hence, it is imperative that all regions nominate members willing to serve in this capacity to provide regional representation. Engagement with our corporate partners is not only important for sponsorship of IDR meetings and prizes, but also for the development of academic industry collaborations that can lead to research translation and societal benefits. There are many examples of this research translation over the last 100 years, but one I know all members are very proud of is the role IADR academic and industry members have played in the identification of fluoride as an anti kerogenic agent and the use of fluorides in community water supplies and oral care products to reduce the economic and social burden of dental caries. The role IADR plays as a catalyst in the development of academic industry collaborations cannot be overstated and is one of the many attractions to members. We thank our corporate partners for their engagement and recognise academic industry collaboration as a highly valued activity of the overall IADR experience. A recent IADR st strategic planning review has reaffirmed the strategy of IADR regionalisation with the formation of the five regions, Africa Middle East, Asia Pacific, Latin American, North American and Pan-European. The formation of the regions provides an opportunity to address unique local conditions and membership needs within a similar time zone. However, it is also clear from that review that IDR needs to improve the level of professional services support and operational activities within the regions with better service coordination and communication with global headquarters. The success of regionalisation has been made even more important with the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic causing the cancellation of the 2020 general session and the offering of a 100% virtual meeting for the 2021 general session. This pandemic poses the greatest challenge to IDR in its 100 year history in terms of member retention and fiscal security. I would like to acknowledge Chris Fox and his headquarters team on the excellent financial stewardship and rapid implementation of online offerings, including the virtual general session, to successfully navigate through the pandemic's impact to date. However, the newly formed regions, as well as the scientific groups and networks, will need to play a greater role in member recruitment and retention to help support the regional growth of IADR. I thank the members from around the world who have registered for this first ever online virtual general session and ask them to use the virtual experience platform to fully engage in the meeting. Using this platform, attendees can watch presentations live or view recorded sessions at any time. They can also access online thousands of research presentations, including the Distinguished Lecture Series, Symposia, Keynote Addresses, Lunch and Learning, and Oral and Poster Sessions. Attendees will also be able to discuss and network with other attendees from around the world in the online forum IADR community. So please make full use of the platform to make this virtual meeting a success. Although the impact of COVID-19 has been a challenge and the threat of emergence of more virulent strains of the coronavirus is a concern, I have confidence in human ingenuity and technology to overcome these challenges so that we will be able to meet face to face again, hopefully next year in Chengdu. However, general sessions in the future may offer both in-person and virtual registrations, depending on the outcomes of this current virtual meeting. Notwithstanding the current challenges facing IADR, the post-COVID future looks very exciting. New technologies like integrative structural biology, elucidating the molecular structure of life's nanomachines, including bacterial secretion systems, together with rational drug and immunotherapy design based on multi-omics, will lead to optimised therapies as part of precision medicine. 
This will be supported by robotics and artificial intelligence, referred to as dentronics for dental applications. And together with tissue engineering breakthroughs, should have a significant impact on oral health through ongoing research and research translation by IADR members. These exciting new technologies should lead to the development of multivalent therapies to target polymicrobial communities to prevent and reverse dysbiosis associated with caries and periodontal diseases. 3D printing of tissue scaffolds containing a mineralization system to regenerate lost tissue. And the use of dentronics to not only improve diagnosis, but also to assist in the delivery of better treatment outcomes. In conclusion, I am honoured to represent you and work with you to help shape the future of this outstanding association as the 98th President of the IADR. And I wish you an enjoyable and productive virtual meeting. Thank you.